Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire After a chaotic race at Kansas Speedway last week, we saw three cautions, an abnormal uh, yellow count, and it ended up being Benny Watson getting yet another win on, on the channel and his first win on the season and first win for GMS all season long. He carries in some momentum and he needs it. Only five races to go in the regular season. This is race 10 halfway through season number five. And it's the larger tech 200 at Darlington Raceway. What's up, everyone? It's, it's the boy on Swiss 97, aka Nick Sexton, and welcome to the Lady in Black Darlington Raceway, a very tricky and challenging racetrack on the schedule. And we are set for a good one 37 laps on tap, one pit stop, and someone will leave here with a race victory at Darlington Raceway. It's gonna be a wild one, and I'm not alone for this one. I'm joined by once again Prime from Nick up here in the booth. Thank you, Nathan. Hello, viewers. Welcome to Darlington, one of the oldest racetracks in real life NASCAR, and home of something that scares many drivers, including myself, the Darlington Stripe. Now, as a driver, Nathan, does the Darlington Stripe scare you? Mm, somewhat. The Stripe is not too bad. If you just kiss it, no harm, no foul, but these drivers they have to watch out for what I like to call the Darlington Smack, where they smash the wall and not just kiss it. And uh, if you kiss it, no harm, no foul, like I said, but if you do the smack, that might cause some AO damage. And with this being a relatively fast track until the tires fall off a little bit, that could play into a role here at, I'm at Darlington. The points stealings are looking pretty spicy. I will say this. Sean Mullen, Jordan Stout, and Zachary Fitzwater all started in the mid-pack of the field. Meanwhile, Mendoza starts fourth. How big of a um, advantage might Mendoza have in, in the short 37 lap race? Well, Mendoza starting up front is definitely going to have the advantage, and she's on the inside, something that the, the top three in points, I believe, don't have. At least, as far as we know, Zachary Fitzwater and Shauna Martin, they're all going to start on the outside, something that's going to hurt them very badly mm -hmm. on the start, especially. So Felicity Mendoza already has that advantage to her side by starting on the inside and in row two. That's definitely going to be something that we look forward to as the run goes on to see if she, if her truck and if her team brought the right setup here to Darlington. Yeah, without that, it's going to be not something to not really want to be. And we see it in flame. Jordan Stout is the only one of the top four points on the inside lane. And those are starts fourth. Fitzy, I believe, in 17th and then Mullen in 20th. So the other three in the top four points are on the outside, and that's not really one to be. Maybe a little bit off turn four, but other than that, it is a bomb field race right now, like what we saw at Kansas last week. And we are going to go over the point standings here after race 9 of season number 5. And it is still Shaman as the point leader, 8 points ahead of Jordan Stout. Uh, now in in second, Zachary Fitzwell in third, 12 points behind Mendoza in fourth, 16 points behind. But that in fifth, 24 points behind Eli Bright made some big moves here uh, late in, in the regular season with some uh, good ones. Now tied for six and points with the um, testament of Angel Gutierrez. Uh, uh, both, you know, uh, Bright is 26 points back and then Gutierrez is 28 points back. William Ayers is in eighth. Uh, 40 points behind, and then Nick Lopez and Justin Zidell uh, are tied for 9th, 43 points behind. And then Juan Garcia, Chris Jericho, and John Hernandez all outside the top 10 in points. They are all 51 points behind. Jay Rando is 55, and Chris Mills is 57. And like I said, it is very tight outside the curve line and right around the curve line. Here's the race to the chase stands. Mullen plus 51, Stout plus 43, Fitzy plus 39, Mendoza plus 35. Those four are pretty good at the moment with five races to go. Burnett, uh, Burnett plus 27, 
Blight plus 25, Gutierrez plus 23. This solid, and then this is what it's tight is plus 11. Nick Lopez and Justin Zidell only plus 8. Juan Garcia, Chris Jericho, and John Hernandez a minus 8. Garcia has wild card number 1. And then Jay Rando is 12 points behind. Chris Mills is 14 points behind with wild card number 2. Uh, Kamal Jr. my 16 rows and last week's winner Ben Watson 19 points behind the cutoff and then Anthony Hernandez minus 22 and Seth Swy minus 23. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get these truckers one off for the 10th race of season number 5. Hopefully everyone rolls off and looks like that is the case. It's Justin Zaytel and Caleb Wolves, Eli Bright, Felicity Mendoza, Jay Rando, and Aaron Abel. Juan Garcia and Chris Jericho are running out of the top 10. It's last week's winner, Ben Watson, and Sam Oscar with a great qualifying one. And uh, it's only 37 laps, uh, uh, one pit stop around lap 23. If this stays green, who do you think will win here at the Lady in Black? I, was, I believe it was last week at Kansas where we saw the pole sitter have, have just such a massive uh, advantage over the field through a gap. But when the caution started to come out, that's when the lead started to, you know, uh, dissipate. But I think that that's not going to be the case for Justin Seidel. As we know, that uh, he's they're right there on the cutoff. But, you know, as we know, Darlington, there's not really that many cautions. And if there is one, that's very rare. But I don't think today we'll see one. I think Justin Seidel right there on the cutoff. He is uh, plus eight. I think he's going to get the win. And I think he's going to have a great points run today, Nathan. Not bad pits like Dell and a couple of uh, um, other drivers have come close of getting that win this season. No repeat winners so far through nine races. Will that trend continue today? we we'll have to wait and see. It will be Justin Zidell and, and Caleb Bowles on the front row. And we, we are racing at Darlington. It's the Logitech 200. Race 10 of season 5 halfway through after today. Seidel with the lead, but he's going to be forced up top by Eli Bright. Sits in the point standings with some momentum, but like I said at the start of the show, the outside lane is actually decent off of turn number four, and Seidel's going to hang on to the race lead, and we're going to see this all weekend long today and tomorrow for the cup race. You do not want to be on this outside lane in turns one and two. Jay Rando clears uh, for... P3, so does Juan Garcia, but meanwhile, Eli Bright, he's taking a look to the inside, and he's going to poke his nose right there, going into turn three. This is a different shape, like turn one and two. Every corner here is different, and Eli Bright's going to stick his nose out in front and get more of an advantage down the front stretch, and I think he's going to lead that lap. No, it goes to Zydell by just a fraction of a second, but here comes Jay Rando, as now Zydell has fallen back. That swing is going to cost Zydell, not going to get into that side wall, though. And here comes last week's winner, Benny Watson, and, and uh, Caleb Bowles, both of these draws are tied in point standings, but Watson has to win, and uh, Caleb Bowles doesn't, and if things stand, I think Watson would barely take over the second wildcard spot, but here comes Jay Rando, he has came also close to a handful of times at getting that race win, most notably at the uh, race two at uh, Homestead, and a, a couple of times afterwards, Randall has been one of the best drivers this season to be outside of the top ten in points, and he's all over the back bumper like a cheap suit on that 41 of Eli Bright. And since the restart, since the start of the race, he is shot out of a cannon. He made his way cleared single file to P3, made his way past my. Uh, my pick of the race, Justin Seidel, who's now fallen back to P5. Oh. And now Jay Rando in the 43 gets up into the wall, Nathan. We'll see. That's the Darlington smack that we saw. That is the 43 of Josh Williamson. We'll see if there's big damage. I think I saw a glimpse. There is just a little bit of damage there on that right side of the 43 Chevrolet. But the Darlington smack, we saw a Darlington smack back way behind in the, the back marker section. But meanwhile, Eli Bright, he's starting to pull away. And here comes Benny Watson. Oh. He's going to try and get a good corner exit onto the back stretch. The smack is not good. 
a stripe is okay, but yeah, that 43 definitely did a daunting smack. I think that was a 56 in the back. That did a little bit of a stripe instead. Rolls is going to get to the inside of last week's winner, Benny Watson for third. And that might open up the door for Zydell, April, and Mendoza to pass the 23 as well. There goes Zydell, there goes April. I have to watch out if Watson does a stripe or not, he does not. And, oh boy, head out. Uh, Rolls is trying to go to... Uh, uh, from fourth to second here, get two passes, uh, two passes on a lap or two. Randall's gonna fight on this outside of the lane, but I think it will be Rose taking the second place by here. I think he might be right as he clears going into turn one. So does Zydell, so does Aaron Abel, so does Felicity Mendoza, and almost so, so does Benny Watson as now the 16 almost gets up into the wall on the corner exit. That wall seems to jet out a lot more than all the other walls, Nathan. But, uh, Zydell, very important to my pick of the race. He's back up to P3. He fell back to, I believe, farthest back to uh, P5, but now he's made up some more ground with Aaron Abel behind. Caleb Rose, he was almost there to make the move on to P1 uh, a few laps ago, or I'm th maybe I'm thinking of P2. Anyway, he was almost there, and he got the job done, but now he is chasing down Eli Bright. Aaron Abel behind of Justin Zydell. He's going to try and make quick work of him going into turn three. Another top 5 one from Mendoza, the 75 team has been cracking off top 5s and top 10s as of late, doing what they need to do to be in the top 4 in the points standings and who knows, maybe uh, be in the top 3 in points as Abel's going to try to get to the inside of Zydell, he's going to get there, Zydell's going to go way wide, but he's going to keep it off the wall, side by side for the 3rd position, Abel's going to get it and now we have to see if uh, Zydell can rip this top side in 3 and 4 to keep that 4th spot. Maybe mm, we might have battle for the race league here soon. Rose is all over the bump bump uh, of Eli Bright. Of course, uh, this uh, number 19 McInerney does not have a win yet. Um, Will Parrish uh, does not have a truck on a win. Of course, he uh, won with the 17 of local wins at Kansas last week. So, trying to go back to back with team wins in, from club to truck this week. But this one one of Eli Bright is looking really, really strong. And uh, we've seen it with uh, Reggie Fogelman and Tricon Garage. They have multiple wins with multiple, uh, multiple drivers. Fits you one for Nice, and now Eli Bright trying to get himself a win for Nice and have two wins for that uh, uh, Nice multiple team. Yeah, that's a great point about them having speed, especially Eli Bright here at this race. He made quick work there on the on the uh, start of the race, and he is leading, and he has not looked back. Caleb Rose thought he had the car to pass him, the truck to pass him, but stays, remains in P2, and these two are actually starting to grow a gap on Aaron Abel, Mendoza, and Watson. Mendoza takes a look to the inside of turn one. Aaron Abel up the track, almost gets up into the, into the 23 of Benny Watson, the 11 now falls back of this train and Mendoza, who I believe has the faster truck as of now, is going to set her sights on to Caleb Rose in the 19. Uh, quickly see where the uh, uh, top trucks and points are. Fitzy is falling back. I Oh, he has some damage on that right side. It's not been a good couple of races for Fitzwater as he's now last in the um, on track. Bad race for Sean Martin. She's falling back on that 38 machine as well. Where is Jordan Stout? Jordan Stout has made up a lot of ground. He's inside the top 10 actually. So, 3rd and 4th are inside the top 10. Meanwhile, the top 10 points are outside the top 25, I want to say, at least. Jay Randall's going to get past Gutierrez back there. And speaking of uh, Jordan Stout, there he is in the 35, right behind Juan Garcia. Just inside the top 10, Zydell has fallen back. And how about William Ayers? He's kind of popped off late uh, against some good ones um, as of well as that was close between the 33 and the 30. But now we're starting to see the, the tire will take into effect here late into this one. Where Jordan Stout is, that is absolutely detrimental to the point standings and who's going to leave Darlington as the points leader going into the next handful of races because Shauna Martin has led the points since when? I, I don't even know when the last time she wasn't the points leader. <laughs> Very but early on. At, 
Yeah, really early on. She has been super consistent, but now Kayla Bros takes a look to the inside. Shauna Martin's been fantastic all season, but a couple bad races, that's going to put her way behind going into next week. But meanwhile, Kayla Bros out in front takes the lead away from Eli Bright. It took him a few laps, but here comes Mendoza, Watson, and Aaron Abel. They're all looking to swamp Bright going into turn one. The 19 slides up the track just a little bit more than the 41 does, but they're all going to remain single file. We have our nice, we have ourselves a nice little five car pack here, Nathan. Oh yeah, five car breakaway rolls took the race lead, but Bright says, "Nah, nah, I want that race lead back from the 19." And he and uh, Rose is going to get bonus more for me last time by, but Blight, oh, never mind, Rose with a great one on the outside, and he's going to keep, uh, keep the race lead at the moment, like you said, a five-truck breakaway between Blight, Mendoza, Watson, Rose, and Abel, but watch out as uh, some of these draws like Garcia and uh, Stout might be able to get a good pit stop and join these top five. Uh, how about McInerney, both trucks inside the top seven. Rose and a style great one for those two drivers. And now, I will say we are about five laps away from pit stops. And that could be very, very critical of who ends up being the race win. Boy, has been the, the dominant twat for the most part. But Mendoza is in second and pulling away from everyone else. Just looking at Felicity Mendoza's stats so far this season in the race nine. She has four top fives and five top tens, but no wins so far. That's very surprising because she has run consistently up front as the stats say and as I've observed in my time up here in the booth. Is today finally her chance? But first, she has to get by Eli Bright, who is also hungry. He also wants to be a part of this. While he's also in, in cup, he wants to be successful in trucks. Bright oh. almost <laughs> up into the wall, almost into Mendoza. And Mendoza is going to find a way around him. And the 41 is going to hopefully stand his ground for Eli Bright's sake. But he is going to concede going into turn three. And we have a new leader going into turn four. And onto the front stretch, it is Felicity Mendoza. Uh, for a second, I thought Bright would have... Maybe I had a shot to rip that second lane in 3 and 4, but was not quite able to do so. But we've seen it all day. Whenever someone takes the lead from Blight, it only takes him a lap or two to take it right back. Uh, Mendoza, along with so many other drivers this season, could have won a shorter one. Uh, I'm already, but has not gotten the job done yet. Mendoza trying to get the first win here today. Blight in second, Rose in third, Abel in fourth. A uh, great one for Aaron Abel outside the top 20 points at, at, at least for the number 11 for Twicon. Ben Watson, of course, he won last week at Kansas, trying to get back to back top fives. And, and look at some of these guys don't catch up at the top five right before pit stops of like Dell, Stout, and Garcia. We should see pit stops at any moment now. Yeah, around next lap to lap 25 is when we'll see most trucks hit pit road. And this is good news for Felicity Mendoza when she got around when she did. Eli Bright, and, and Bright's actually trying to find a way around Mendoza, but Mendoza says, no, this is my lead, this is my win, hopefully, she says. And Caleb Rose sees all of this and he just wants to have a clean oh, race and Eli go. Bright's gonna hit pit road. As we've seen in the test race, the undercut doesn't quite work as well as the overcut, but we'll see what Eli Bright cooks up here at Darlington. We have another truck hitting pit road. I'm not sure who that is. That's the 12th truck of Samet Osgood. There's a truck in front of him as well. That's the 24 of Stephen Collin. That's the 4, I believe, of Tris, uh, Chris Jericho and the 13 of Mac Johnson. And then we'll see a lot more trucks hit pit road this time around, Nathan. Yeah, a couple of trucks, about five to seven toward the undercut, and here comes the majority of the field. The 75, 19, 11, 23, 17. The five of Crown Dream is going to stay out another lap, but that's the only one so far, and that's the only one. Everyone else is on pit road, besides the five of both the Crown Dream trying the extreme overcut. And here we go, the one pit stop of the day. And it's going to be important of who gets this race win here at Darlington. Important, crucial, detrimental. Add any other verb that describes this moment on pit road for these drivers. Oh, no! Oh! 
some slight contact with the 19 of Caleb Rose and Felicity Mendoza as they were both trying to get into the pit stalls. Seidel takes pit stall number one. Pole sitter, there goes the four of Chris oh. Jericho off. Felicity Mendoza, is, did she take two tires? That's a very interesting strategy indeed. I think that's a Aaron lot Abel's of, of what these truckers are doing. Seidel has damage and he's fixing that and I think that is the way to go. Two, uh, two tires here, I don't think in that. I, I was not expecting that one. And that shakes up everything, Nathan. That Because all these trucks, especially the five who just came down pit road, I believe he took, uh, or they took uh, five tires as well. 43 there. We saw the Darlington smack, not a, uh, a stripe rather. But here is the lead. It is no longer a five car or five truck pack. It is now a two truck battle dogfight to the end, Nathan. It's going to be Mendoza and Blight battling for those uh, ways to lead. Oh, Blight trying to get there. He does off turn number four. Uh, not, not turn four, turn two. And he's going to get to the inside and make it stick. And this is going to be interesting. I was not expecting um, everyone to take two tires. I thought it was going to be four tires, but I guess not. I mean, like, Blight is going to take the way to lead back from Mendoza. But he lost him up to third, trying to go back to back here. Today at Darlington. And how about his teammates? Demon Collin. Two GMS trucks. They uh, struggled at Kansas besides the 23. The 43 got into outside wall, but finally, Stephen Cologne, but I believe, is the last in points. Uh, he's inside the top five. Going to start with in fifth. We you know, yeah, fifth. And April in sixth. Uh, Mongo Sia in seventh. John um, Hernandez in eighth. How about Quan Jr? We've not seen him all day, but that strategy to stay out late is going to put him inside the top 10. And then we got uh, mainly Hernandez for now in 10th, but he's going to be challenged by uh, Oskin. Oh, ho, ho. Ooh, that was a real butt clencher there for the 55 or the, for the 45 rather of Anthony Hernandez up on the outside. Meanwhile, back to the lead. I've noticed something, Nathan, and I think that's going to be very uh, interesting coming to the end as we have under 10 laps to go. It takes a round two laps for the person who just got passed for the lead to get up the momentum as we were seeing Felicity Mendoza retake and reclaim the lead down the back stretch. But my point being, it takes around two to three laps for the momentum to build for P2 to, uh, to put a move on P1. As we've just seen, it was around two to three laps since Bright made the move for the lead. And we are in for something of a rare treat that we see nowadays in the truck series. A two truck dogfight to the end. Around seven laps to go. If these two trucks can stay one, two, and if Benny Watson can stay out of it, which it seems like that he is because he is not getting all that much time. And I believe it's going to be Mendoza and Bright fighting for the win here at Darlington. This very well could be the case to drove it short. The team of Henderson looking for his first win as a truck owner. And then uh, we got Trevor Williams Jr. looking for a second win as a team owner for these Motorsports. Fitzy won at Richmond. Eli Bright trying to get the win here today at Darlington. And yeah, unfortunately for Watson and Stout and Cologne and Abel, they're not really gaining on the top two like... I thought they would, so it's probably going to be a two truck fight. Still going to be a great one for Ben Watson, who really all of a sudden might have a shot and might have something to say about making the chase as a wild card. Uh, here with four races to go, three after today. But we have six laps to go. This is a very short race, only 37 laps. Uh, meanwhile, the Denny 7500 tomorrow is 92 laps, the second longest race on this season, I, uh, I'm pretty sure. Other than the Colts 600. But we have five laps to go at the line. And it's still going to be a dull fight between Mendoza and Blight. And it's going to get even more feisty if they catch up to the lap traffic. But I, I they might catch them with one to go. But I just don't think that... Is that the 98? That's the 98 yep. of Donnie Fallington. He's way off the pace. And Eli Bright is starting to fall off Mendoza. I've just noticed going into turn one. But if... And Doza catches the lap traffic, then we might have ourselves an even more interesting race than what was already presented to us. This has been a fantastic race. Caution free, lots of battles, lots of Darlington stripes given out. This has been a wonderful race to commentate. Oh yeah, without doubt, definitely a lot of assignment here at Darlington. And it's not been a pack race like we uh, uh, used before with the 05 version. Tyler's taking it in into effect and we have one-on-one -on -one battles all over the racetrack. 
We have one for the race three with, between Bright and Mendoza. And we just saw one with uh, the 35 and the 23. Bright starting to catch back up with Mendoza here. This is not over. If Bright can get a good three and four, I have something still all over the bat bumper. Three laps to go at Darlington. I don't know who's going to get the race win. I remember what I was talking about earlier in the race about the momentum and how it takes around two to three laps. Well, Eli Bright got passed. He started to fall off the pace, but he, clo he slowly got back to the back bumper of Mendoza. And now he is there, ready to make a move at whatever it takes. Two laps to go coming this time by off a of turn four onto the front stretch. And we are not going to catch the lap traffic, Nathan. It's going to be close, but I don't think we will in time. Two laps to go, Mendoza and Bright. Mendoza can go wide, Bright running a little bit lower. And Eli Bright running a little bit lower. He's gonna have one out for turn number two. Is it gonna make it right now? Or is he gonna wait? He's gonna wait. Eli Bright has to make a move here on his final lap at Darlington. The white flag is out. This time by Mendoza for a great one and three and four though. And Eli Bright is going to have two good more opportunities, two more opportunities to make the move for P1. White flag going into P, going into turn one rather. Mendoza opens her gap from uh, Eli Bright in P2. Mendoza off a of turn number two. And it looks like that this is going to go the way of Felicity Mendoza if Eli Bright doesn't put the send of all sends going into turn three. Bright was better in 1 and 2, but Mendoza was better in 3 and 4. Mendoza's finally get the job done. First Korean win in the truck series for Felicity Mendoza. Fourth in the point standings and gonna gain massively on two out of the top three in the points. Great one for Mendoza. Great one from George South and third in the story 5 12. And oh boy, could we be looking at, at the new top two in the point standings? As the 38 and the 42, I think, had a bad day here today at Darlington. Uh, Eli Bright, he could have, well, should have made that move down the bat search with one, uh, one and a half laps to go. I don't know why they're making the move, but that ended up costing him the win. A great second place one, and he's also going to gain on points a little bit. Uh, Matthew Burnett, I believe, just finished outside of the top 10, so... Still a good one for him. A lot of draws up there in points. Got good ones besides Fitzy and uh, Mullen. So it's going to be interesting of what's going to happen for the points. But great race and great battle between Bright and Mendoza. Something to notice as well is the stats that I was talking about about Mendoza. Before this race, Mendoza and Bright had the same amount of top fives and top tens. Oh, I forgot wow. to mention that. So they both had four top fives, I believe. Yes, four top fives and five top tens going into this. But now Felicity, Felicity Mendoza has something over Eli Bright, and that is a win. Congratulations, Felicity Mendoza. Dominate, I want to say domination, but definitely commanded this race uh, from the midway point from when the, the pit cycles began and then just took command from then. Never looked back. Great race. Great race, Bright dominated the first half, and Mendoza really took control after pit stops, and also close for Eli Bright right there, but still a great second place finish for that Nice Motorsports team. Stout in third, Watson with his second top five in a row, and fourth, and then uh, Steam Clone in fifth, finally a great one for that 24 team, and a man able in sixth, Juan Garcia in seventh. Ooh, that's going to be interesting, because... One goal to see it was only eight points below the car fly and had wild card number one. That might just bump him, uh, bump them into the top ten because I Dell finished twenty second after pit stops. John Hernandez in eighth, and how about Crown Jr. was the last truck that uh, pitted and comes home with a top ten great one one for them here, and the same Oscar for a great one in the twelfth truck struggle this season. A lot of good ones here today that definitely needed it. Uh, Oscar. Uh, Cologne, Abel, just to name a few. Ailes with a great one in 11th. He was in the top 10 at one point. Uh, Cables in 12th. Wakefield in 13th. Where did he come from? The Daytona has struggled this season, but 13th. Burnett still with the top 15. That's going to be good in points as he was 5th. Jane Rando at 16th for the 16th. 12th. Uh, and then Anthony Hernandez, Matt Johnson with a good top 20. 
Nick Lopez, that could be interesting because he was just above the cutoff uh, cut line and just like Zydell kind of finished mid pat and then subscribe out of the top 20 and points I'm entering today and on the race threat. Sean Mullen finished 23rd and then Zachary Fitzwell finished 32nd one lap down but we had Fitz to stand at one point for me Darlington smack so that's unfortunate. Avery Alford, Josh Wimson, Chris Reynolds, and Zachary Fitzwell all one lap down probably from a Darlington smack. Tough day for those four and this can be interesting of what the points look like. What's the final thoughts after a short, sweet, caution free race here at Darlington? That is the way we like it, Nathan. I think that we saw ourselves one of the better races this season. And I'm not saying that races have been bad this season. It's it's been very competitive. It's been very entertaining. And I think that this would probably be in top five. Not all races have to be filled with cautions to be entertained. And I think that this was a prime example of that. Going back to the points, it is definitely going to be very interesting to see who takes over P1 and P2. Because there's no way that Shana Martin leaves as points leader. And she is definitely going to have to grind these next few weeks to get up there before the chase. It's going to be very interesting. A dogfight all the way. And Nathan, I'm here all for it. Yeah, it's going to be exciting and... You know, we still have six races to go in the Cup Series, but we only have three races to go in the regular season for these Truck Series drivers. Charlotte, Stafford, and Pocono till the regular season comes to a close. This game down to it here in the Truck Series. And the points are as follows. We now finally have a new point leader. Jordan Stout is the new point leader. Only five points ahead of Felicity Mendoza. Sean Mullen is only 12 points behind. E I mean, like, Blaze is only 15 points behind. That's the top four. Bennett is in fifth, 27 points behind. Fitzroy is, is in sixth, 33 points behind. He's had a rough uh, couple of races. Uh, William is is in seventh. Angel Couture is in eighth. Juan Garcia is in ninth, so he's in on points. And Johnny Hernandez is the last one in on points by three uh, points above Nick Lopez. And right now, it is Justin Zydell and Benny Watson with the two wildcard spots. Watson out of nowhere, the last two races have gained 13 or 14 positions and points. Now he has a wildcard spot. It is getting spicy here in the truck series with only three races to go until the season 5 chase. Thanks for watching for joining me up here in the booth. And until tomorrow for the trucks, uh, for the cup race, the second longest race of the season. Uh, for the Denny Southern 500. Twitch series are off next week as Cup is doing the all so He's at New Smyrna. I'm excited for that one. But Twitch will be back in two weeks at Charlotte. And uh, until then, we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye bye.